Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to select the best fit uh, regression model using cross validation. Now, if you're familiar with cross validations, you must be knowing that cross validation is used to select uh, the most suitable or the best fit model out of a set of models. The idea behind using cross validation is that your model uh, should not not only perform well in the uh, training data set, it also should perform well in the test data set, right? Uh, and several test data sets, not just the one that you have taken, but you can actually take many test data sets and see whether that works well or not. So uh, there are several types of cross validation that you can uh, you know potentially choose from and we'll see at least two of them here to uh, understand how we can use cross validations to you know select the best uh, fit model and we'll select we'll, we'll show it in the context of using a, a linear regression and a polynomial uh, regression uh, model now this would be very useful for beginner but those who are very familiar with cross validation um, for them it will be a refresher but may not be of very advanced uh, standard of cross validations so it, I would keep it very simple to uh, make sure that it is useful for beginners uh, in, in uh, you know in statistical modeling so we'll use a data set called auto it's there uh, in R it's a built-in data set and we'll use a library boot where we have the cross validation function with us normally when you are doing regression model linear regression model you are using the function LM right you must be familiar with this functions but here we are going to use GLM instead of LM which is generalized version of linear regression and GLM has many other generalized linear uh, models such as logistic regression, probit regression, uh, you know other forms of uh, regression with different uh, distribution of different uh, uh, different distribution assumptions. So uh, GLM has a set of models and linear regression uh, with normality assumption is just one form of model right so GLM has GLM uh, function has this uh, cross validation function inbuilt so you don't have to separately do it um, you know apart from your linear regression so I'll, I'm going to use GLM in this case so the idea is to fit a model which predicts the uh, mileage given the horsepower of the engine of an automobile and the data that we are using is auto okay all right so the linear regression model looks like this the dependent variable or the target variable is mileage and the predictor is horsepower okay so when you run this you will get your result in the uh, a variable we'll save it in the variable glm.fit so the output from this linear regression will be saved here and then we'll use the function cv.glm okay and I have already said that uh, cross validation function is enabled in GLM that's exactly uh, is the reason why we're using GLM instead of LM so we we'll use this function and we'll provide the data set and we'll provide the model result that we have received in the previous step and it's going to give us the uh, cross validation result okay and the uh, cross validation that you know uh, we're, we're going to use this is the leave one out uh, cross validation okay uh, there are other cross validation as well so we'll see two types of cross validation here one is leave one out uh, cross validation and the other one is uh, k fold cross validations if you're not familiar with cross validation theory and what the types are uh, there is a link below in the description section of this video uh, you're going to get a, a video on, on my channel where I have, I have explained about the different types of cross validation that you can use. I have I've discussed about four or five of them. Okay. Just for you to be you know familiar with the theory behind uh, cross validations and so on. Okay. So I'm not going to explain what leave one out cross validation, what cross K fold cross validation is. If you want, uh, if you're interested, you can you know look at the video in the description section which explains everything. So when I'm going to run this code and once it's done I'll, I'll uh, you know uh, print the delta value which is going to give the cross validation error. When I run this code this portion of the code 
this portion of the code. I'll get uh, this result here. I've already run this just to save time for us. So the error that I'm getting here is 24.23 and 24.23. So up to two decimal point, it's the same. Um, and then I have 151 here, it's 114. So that's again, it's going down. So I have just used a very simple uh, regression model, which you know does not change much. But if I take uh, you know few polynomials to test it out, it will be you know clearer as to which one to be picked. Okay. So here it is more or less same. Okay. So there is nothing interesting about it. You can't have an option of choosing which one of you know to be used. But here you know we are uh, we are building five different models uh, and seeing which one is actually performing the best by doing the cross validations. So for that we are first creating a matrix with uh, you know uh, five uh, you know places where you now we are going to save the error and then of course uh, in the end we'll print the error. So creating a vector of five error terms that's what it is and we are using a for loop which is going to uh, build, um, which is going to be used to build uh, different models in each one of these loops. And this loop will increase from 1 to 5. And the idea behind this is that we'll use polynomial function and we'll use several of these polynomials in the model. So the first model will have only horsepower as the predictor. The second model will have horsepower plus horsepower square or square of the horsepower. So that's the quadratic term. Okay, in the third model, we'll have the uh, horsepower plus square of horsepower plus cube of horsepower. So we're not only using quadratic terms here, we're also using cubic terms. And in the fourth model, we'll have the, you know, the fourth power of horsepower. In the fifth one, we'll have the fifth power of. So, you know, the model actually gets bigger and bigger. The first model has only one term, one predictor. Um, the second one has, you know, two. Uh, you know linear as well as quadratic and the third one has linear quadratic cubic and so on right so we'll see which one of these performs the best when we run this code so the code here is this like this okay so okay so this is the code so the first we have just created uh, a vector that has it's just a blank vector so we're going to save the error terms over here and we are using a loop here, uh, so it, it it varies from one to five. Starts with one, and then it, it keeps on in increasing by one in each step, and the uh, maximum value is five. And then we are saving the output in GLM dot fit, where we'll save the output and the function that we have used GLM, same that we have used in the previous step instead of LM. Uh, the target variable is mileage again, and we are using polynomial term. To ensure that we'll have a polynomial regression, so we're not, we're not going to have only uh, the linear terms horsepower. We'll also have the square of it, the cube of it, and so on. Right. So each step is given by this. In the first step we have i equal to one. That means the power of horsepower. Uh, the uh, there is only going to be a linear term. In the second step i is going to be two. So we'll have horsepower plus horsepower square. So there will be two predictors horsepower and square of it okay and in the third it is going to go up so that's the way it is uh, going to help us build different polynomial uh, the first one will be linear and the the rest four one of them will be polynomial regressions right and then we'll save the error terms in the cross validation in the cv dot error vector and when we run this one so this is the function that one we have used previous step um, so provide the data set and the output that we have saved from the previous. So this step we save the output and then we are going to, you know, get the delta value of them. Uh, so every time there is a, the first one will be the delta. So that's going to have the error terms. And when i equal to 1, it's going to save the error term of the first model. When i equal to 2, it's going to save the error for the second model and so on. And finally, we're printing the model. I've already, you know, run the code for you. And there are five different models. As you can see, there are five different error terms. The first one is 24.23. So that same 
error that we received in the first uh, code that we ran because we only had the linear term there right so here also in the linear term it's the model value is 24.23151 when you use a quadratic terms the error value goes down significantly from 24.23 it goes down to 19.24 so that's a good thing right because we want uh, the error to be as minimum as we possibly can have right the third when you use a cubic term along with the quadratic term the value is 19.33 in fact it increases and then it becomes 19.42 19.03 so once you see there is a significant drop from linear term to quadratic so from 24 to 19 but after that there is hardly any change there hardly any change you can see right it's all around 19 so in that case there is no point using you know a more complex model having more number of parameters it's always good to have smaller number of parameters right so the best way to go about you know finalize the model here is that you go with the quadratic terms so just have two parameters in the model okay uh, so the final model in this case if i if i would write it for you it would be uh, the mileage uh, equal to let's say there are two parameters with this you know uh, the intercept of course uh, horsepower plus uh, meter to the square of horsepower okay so this is the uh, the quadratic term okay so this is going to be the final model which you know performed the best because that's why we're getting the minimum error with probably a very small set of parameters only uh, two slope coefficients and you know one of course we on, always have one um, intercept all right now that's what we've seen the one uh, leave one out cross validations another famous cross validation technique is the k fold okay syntax remained pretty much the same except the fact that we are using k value equal to 10 now remember that leave one out cross validation is just a special case of k fold cross validation when k equal to 1 that's nothing but um, leave one out cross validation but k can be any number okay not just one it can be 2 3 10 15 anything so we are going to take k equal to 10 okay um, the code remains pretty much the same we are using the for loop but we are going to have 10 models in this case okay so we are going to have um, the, the the first model as linear then quadratic uh, you know with uh, squaring the horsepower in, uh, and adding the model then cube and then fourth power fifth power and so on up to tenth power so previous code we just kept it limited to uh, fifth power we are going to increase this tenth power so I was just curious to know whether you know this is going to improve the model if uh, at a later stage there is a significant improvement and you might see that there, that there is hardly any change but, but you know there is nothing wrong in uh, you know doing this experimentation to find out if it, if at all um, it actually improves so let's use the k-fold cross validation the syntax remains same up, up to here except the fact that we are using uh, 10 iteration in the instead of 5 in the previous one okay and there is slight change in the syntax here in the cv dot uh, glm function um, we are using k equal to 10 which is an additional parameter to the function cv dot glm and then we are saving the error terms in the cv dot error and when we run this we get the result uh, like this so we this is the result in front of us so the first one is again 24.18 then when you use a quadratic term it goes down to 19.15 significant drop but then it remains more or less same throughout and there is hardly any drastic drop in the uh, error value okay there are few cases where you know it is 18 but that's not 18.9 but that's close to 19 which is not a significant drop you might consider though but there will be several number of if it is a prediction problem you might go in for you know these values as well you know having these many terms if implementation is not you know a challenge having more number of parameters more number of factors but for simplicity if if uh, you know you are to see simplicity is, is more 
uh, of a concern than you know slight compromise on the prediction predictive power then better to go with the quadratic term because that's what is more or less same with these values right so again there is the conclusion that we are drawing here is that beyond quadratic terms the model is not improving any further so having higher order of a uh, higher power of the uh, you know predictor values which is horsepower predictor variable horsepower is not improving the model so what we have learned here is that um, sometimes if you add the polynomial terms in our model the predictive power increases but if you keep on adding, it need not increase, um, you know, for a very a large order of uh, terms. It just could increase for few terms like quadratic, cubic, but may not improve uh, for higher order, you know. So that's uh, one lesson to be learned. Uh, and, and when you do it back and forth, you know, try out few uh, other transformation, not just, you know, taking a power. You can take other transformation, do more feature engineering, take you know logarithm exponential value minimum maximum and so many other transformation you can take on the uh, variables uh, of course not on this data set of course uh, there are you know several other data set that you can use and test it out but the mode of selection of um, the best fit model using cross validation remains the same what i have explained below and the most simple form of cross validation that you can use to select the best model but ensure that the model is good enough both in terms of having the minimum um, errors uh, number of uh, minimum error value at the same time the model should be simple enough having too many parameters is not not always recommend because it's it's uh, you know likely to overfit if you use let's say here you are using eight parameters with hardly any significant drop in the error terms it's likely to overfit okay uh, you're not sure though but you know it's likely to do so but if there is significant drop let's say it becomes 16 then you can you, you might might as well go ahead with this otherwise it better to go with a smaller set of parameters so smaller set of uh, you know uh, predictors that uh, helps okay that helps to you know not just build and implement also ensure that you know it actually works in the real data or the future data um, and there is not much of this overfitting issue uh, or lack of performance in the new data and that's what is the intention of building models right thanks